Hi, welcome to the Inner West Youth Series. Today, we're going to have an interesting look at collage with Paris Dewhurst. But before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today, the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Eora Nation, and to pay our deepest respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and any First Australians watching this series with us today. For further inspiration, check out our catalogue for some of our amazing art books and visit Marrickville Library for our specialist art collection on the mezzanine level. Enjoy! Hi, my name is Paris Dewhurst. I'm an artist and I'm also an art teacher. I teach high school students and I'm here to show you collage. With my art practice, I work across a lot of different mediums. Um, I love working with fabrics, I've worked with soft sculpture, I love experimenting, so I come from a background where my mum and my nan, they were very much about sewing and knitting and creating things from fabrics. I really love that textile, uh, the tactile quality of working with fabrics and it's something I've incorporated into my practice. Um, I'm all about trying new things, working with different materials, experimenting. So I just want to give you a bit of inspiration to try something new, try something you haven't found, um, that you haven't tried before. And yeah, give it a go and you might end up creating something that you love and something you want to share with other people. Other things I've worked with, I've done a lot of drawing and experimental drawing. I love hiking, I love the landscapes. Um, because of this, I went and did a residency in Iceland and I went hiking around Iceland and got really into the landscape there. So I did some experimental landscape drawings. Um, they were in the style of topographical maps, so a little bit abstract. Um, but again, this was something that came out through both my passion for the landscape and hiking and getting into nature but also experimenting. I've had a few exhibitions in lots of different spaces. Generally, I'll try and have about one exhibition a year on average um, in really different spaces, sometimes in gallery spaces, sometimes in a garage, sometimes in someone's home. Um, and generally, this is a way to sort of fuel my own art practice. For me, it gives me motivation. It also gives me that community connection. Usually I'll have an exhibition with friends. I've also met people through having shows with them. Um, and it just gives a little bit of a deadline and something to work towards to resolve a work and to see an artwork come to its final resolution. So today we're going to work with collage. Um, for a little bit of inspiration, Marrickville Library has an amazing artist collection just upstairs in the library. And I would suggest go to the library, check out the books. There's a lot of amazing collage artists out there, both contemporary and historical. There's Hannah Hock, Richard Hamilton, Deborah Kelly, John Stazaka, lots of artists to explore. Another great thing we can use the library for is inspiration for images. With collage, we want to work with images from an archive. So we can check out the archive at Marrickville Library, um, photocopy some images and use that as a springboard for some inspiration. So let's get started. Okay, so this is something you can either do on your own or it's something you can do with friends. I've done a lot of collages with friends. It's a really nice way to spend time together. You can make a dinner or a, you know, lemonade and do college collage together. It's a really nice way to spend time with your friends. So how we've started, I've got an archive of images here. Where I got these images from, I found this book in a street library. It's an old book on Australian native flora and fauna and I thought this would be amazing for collage. So already there's a bit of a loose theme there. Um, I've also got images from magazines, so a lot of sort of fashion magazines. It doesn't have to be anything, um, you know, one particular magazine. This is from a bunch of magazines. So I think, you know, some from Marie Claire and Vogue and New Idea. 
um, but just images of people. And it's always good to get a bit of variety. Generally, I like motion and movement in people. It adds a bit of sort of something dynamic to the collage and you can generally sync them into reacting with something. So, for example, this figure here, is she jumping away from something? And later we can explore that. So it gives you a little bit of a springboard to work from when there's movement and action um, happening. So what we've got, we've got an archive of Australian birds and Australian animals. We've got an archive of people taken from magazines. And over here, I've got an archive of different images. So some of cats, personally, I love cats. Um, so I found a, another book on cats. It was Cats in Business. I found in a street library as well. Um, the same cat was featured throughout the whole book. So that's something as well that might give me a bit of inspiration for my, for my collage. Um, for example, that might inspire me to use repetition. So how am I going to use this cat in a particular collage? I've also broken these parts down into themes. So I've got my trusty, the cat here, and then I've got different facial features here, all in different sizes as well. Um, and then here I've got flowers and an insect as well. And then just um, coloured bits of paper. Okay, so we've got our archive and this is a way to give yourself parameters to work within. Now, do what works for you. Um, you might want to find images of everyone wearing denim. You might want to find images of eyes and just cut out a hundred eyes. Um, you might want to find animals, whatever that theme is. Um, and you can even pick one to three themes, like what I've done here. So I've got Australian natives, I've got people in dynamic kind of action movements, and I've got cats. So completely different themes, but we're going to bring them together in the collage. Um, also, some advice is get thrifty with this. You don't have to get, there definitely are um, resources out there for collage artists, but you can also work with old magazines, you can work with newspapers, um, street libraries are a great resource as well, and um, you can always go digital. So a good way to do digital collage is using PhotoP. It's an alternative to Photoshop and it's free. Um, and if you want to go digital, absolutely go for it. The internet is a great way to source images as well. You can do a quick Google search. Um, for example, everyone in denim, get all those images together and then you can work with them on Photoshop or PhotoP. Just a reminder, when you're sourcing images online, make sure you get them copyright free. Okay, so four components of collage. I'm going to break them up into four separate parts. We've started with archiving our images. So the first part from here is selecting our images. Um, then we're going to do cutting, arranging and gluing. Now that we have our archive, we want to select what images we want to work with. Um, once you've selected your images, just a little tip with cutting is when you cut, actually cut slightly within the line of the collage. Okay, now we're going to arrange our objects on the page. Now, you've got the choice. You can either work with a background, so a pre-done background from a magazine. I've picked these two magazines. This one's from the weekend paper. Uh, this is from a magazine. And I really like their backgrounds. I think the landscape is beautiful here. It's quite, um, there's a lot we can put in that landscape. And with this one, there's an interesting interaction between the people here and also the setting. So I'm going to use that as a springboard for my idea. And let's start with our collage. So with this one, I'm just going to keep it simple. So I'm gonna use um, juxtaposition. And that's basically where I'm just getting two objects. So I've got the insect head here. I'm gonna place on the figure and the flower there. Now, keeping it really simple, and that's the final collage. So by using juxtaposition, it creates this surrealist quality, um, and it also can create tension between the interaction in the space. Um, so that's 
first one and I'm going to get this bird's head here and put it in the background like that. So with juxtaposition, you're picking two objects that would never usually go together. So that's what I've done here, putting the flower on the figure, insect head here and the bird head there. So think of images that absolutely wouldn't normally go together. It might be a person diving into a desert sky landscape. Um, you might want to work with planets and stars and juxtapose that with being underwater, for example. So that's up to you and your own creativity. Of course, the collage and working from an archive can give you inspiration, can give you something to springboard from. Um, but again, it can be super simple. Um, these are some other examples I've done here. So these are finished collages also working with juxtaposition. Um, and these are with plain backgrounds. So the emphasis is more on the figures and the juxtaposition between the objects. So have fun with it. Work with pre-done backgrounds and photographs and also try just focusing on the figure and you can either put that on coloured paper or a black background so the emphasis is on your collage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to work with changing scales changing the scale. So again we're going to place our objects still working from the archive of images so I've got the Australian animals and figures in the landscape. So here again I'm keeping it simple I'm working with the background space and seeing how the objects interact with each other. So I'm going to try a few things and part of this, you know, it's a little bit intuitive. A lot of it's sort of playing with different pieces, experimenting. It's best not to glue straight away. So first have a play around with different compositions, try different things, and then when you're absolutely happy with it, then you can glue it down. So I'm going to work with this. I'll put the hermit crab in the sky, make it a little bit surreal and otherworldly. And I've got this woman here looking up to the hermit crab. Now what I'm going to do now is add a little bit more depth for using shadow. Um, there's different ways of doing this. I could work with sort of realistic shadows um, but for this project I want to have a bit of fun with it so I'm going to use pops of colour to work with shadows. Um, these I've just picked up from reverse garbage. You can get them from Bunnings, um, but I thought they're great to use for little pops of colour in collage. Um, again, it can be subtle. I like working with contrasting colours. Um, so colours at the opposite end of the colour wheel, and then when you put them together, they really pop and they really stand out. So I've got these two little bits here, sort of cut in organic shapes, and I'm just going to pop that there, so that creates the shadow of the figure there. You can also add a little bit extra, so I'm going to get a little bit of this. And I'll see if this works. Yep, I'll keep that in. So just a little bit of something there. Again, it can be subtle. Um, you don't have to overdo it, but it just adds a little bit more depth to your collage. Okay, so I've just put these together. This is another way of working with pops of colour for shadow. Again, I've just used these little bits here from um, Reverse Garbage or Bunnings. And for the bird, I've cut some organic shapes that very loosely mirror. So this shape here very loosely mirrors the tail. I'll just slip it under there. And then I've got this organic shape here. So the edges are all smooth. There's no distinct angles on that shape. And I'm just going to pop it under there like that. So the two color, colors are contrasted against each other, so they really pop and stand out against each other. And it's just something very subtle, but it really brings out the bird and it frames the bird in an interesting way. 
Again, I've done it here and this one here, I've worked with geometric shapes. So instead of working in a sort of smooth, organic way, I've done very minimal cutting and I've just used the straight edge of the page and I've worked with what I've got for this one. And it's just a matter of, again, experimenting. It's a little bit intuitive, so just move the bits around before you glue down. And sometimes, you know, if you're not quite sure, sometimes you can photograph it. So if you want to experiment with that, you can always take a photo and go back to that later. And then you might want to move the shapes in another way. So here, again, super subtle, um, adding a little bit of geometric shape to the background here. So it turns a vintage black and white photograph into something a little bit more current and contemporary. Okay, so now we're going to work with repetition. This is an example here of working with repetition in an interesting way. Um, already the birds are kind of interacting with the figure in the landscape, but if you look closely, all the birds are from different magazine sources. So you've got a black and white bird that looks almost quite hand-drawn. You've got a blue one here, and then you've got a photograph of a bird in flight here. So all of the birds are sort of interacting with the man and he's interacting with the birds as well. So that's a good way of using repetition. Originally, this image just had that one bird there with the fisherman on his boat. Um, but through using repetition, you can really exaggerate an image and you can add a little bit of drama to an image as well. It's almost a little bit like Hitchcock and the birds. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I've picked this background again from an old magazine. Now, the back ones, it's quite interesting. There's almost a story in it in itself. It looks like a wine cellar, but it's also quite dark and ominous. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got all my cat head images here, um, which I picked these up from a street library. I've actually picked up quite a few cat books in street libraries, so you never know what you get in a street library. Um, and again, I'm going to use repetition here, and it's quite playful. I'm adding a bit of light to this scene through incorporating all these little cat heads, like that. And that's it. Thank you so much for doing my workshop. The main take homes from this are different techniques around collage. Um, so juxtaposition, scale change, working with shadows using fun pots of color, uh, working with different backgrounds and using repetition in your work. Um, have fun with it, experiment with it, bring all your friends together and share this process. It's a really nice way to enjoy time with your friends and loved ones. And that's it. Thanks for joining me. Check out my website and you can see some of my other work. So I've worked with installation and sculpture. Um, I also do printmaking. So if you're interested, check it out.